university and he's in Italy and uh, he's uh, visiting us for a couple of weeks, he's visiting the second week, so he will be here for um, available a couple of days more, so till uh, Friday, so. and uh, anyway, um, he's working on uh, mainly distributed system, uh, cloud computing, uh, service engineering, uh, Internet of Things, and all this stuff. And he will present some activities, some uh, ideas, some projects uh, that are currently under development in, uh, in the University of Messina. So, uh, thank you for coming to uh, the Fito, and uh, uh, now it's your. Uh, the, the audience is for you. Okay, so thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, today I will try to give you some uh, some short inputs related to Internet of Things, applications, uh, Arduino technologies. But before starting with the technical part, I will try to give a very fast presentation about uh, University of Messina, the research group I have there the things that we are, we are doing. Um, so very quickly, um, University of Messina is uh, uh, one of the about 70 universities in, it, in, in Italy. Um, more or less we have around 25,000, 26,000 uh, students uh, at the moment. Um, it is organized in different uh, blocks. Um, this is the engineering faculty where we are. There are uh, at the moment 11 uh, departments uh, available in the university. We regard the uh, in, uh, information technology, computer science. <coughs> we have two groups. Uh, this one is the research uh, center, or better, the computing center of the university, where there are about 50 people working there, and they are mainly focused on uh, service development. So they, they develop software to provide services inside the universities and also to external uh, customers, maybe public administrations, companies. I will tell you something about that. This other group is that, that stands for uh, Mobile Distributed System Lab, is uh, more focused on research. So here we do research in ICT. Some of these uh, research ideas may become products that we will pass to the other group that will deliver the service uh, as a, a commercial service. Okay? So we always have these two aspects, that is the pure research and also something uh, more related to reality, that is the transformation of some research idea in some products. Okay, uh, these are the people that work there. Uh, Sometimes they are more, sometime a little bit less. It depends on the projects that we are uh, that we are running. This is a very fast list of some uh, European projects we have been involved in, but I will go more in details uh, in the technical presentation. Uh, more or less, they are all related to cloud computing and uh, applications on top of cloud, but I will go more in details later on in the second part of this presentation. Uh, I already mentioned this uh, attempt that we have to move from uh, the exploration phase to the exploitation phase. Uh, we believe this is uh, very important, just to avoid to have uh, only theoretical things, but even some concrete products. I am not saying that all the research ideas uh, will become products, but some of them maybe can be converted in something concrete. Uh, the main uh, research area that we are touching is related with uh, cyber physical system, that means also cloud computing, that means uh, Internet of Things, uh, um, so we have objects on one side, the physical object on one side, we have uh, the cyber world on the other, and we try to connect these two worlds, integrating as much as possible the objects hmm, and their representation, or virtual representation, with the computing and the storage part uh, of the infrastructure to process the information that the sensors can detect from a huge amount of objects distributed in the environment. 
We will arrive to the definition of this concept, Sotter defined city, where uh, you will see some uh, physical part, that is the city itself, the possibility to capture information from this environment and then to move these information on the, on the cloud, the cyber part, to analyze this data, to understand what is happening and then uh, maybe actuate some uh, control action through the actuators that you have uh, on the physical part. So the problem is how to integrate these two parts that then will provide you the instruments to control a complex environment as a, a city, for example. And there, there are many kind of possible applications that can be, can be developed. <coughs> Just an example, but we will talk also about this later on. Uh, we have these uh, Smart Me projects. It's a uh, uh, crowd uh, uh, founding initiatives that we launched about uh, ten, eight to ten months ago. We collected some money on the internet and now we are uh, uh, developing the basic infrastructure inside the city of Messina to deliver new kind of services. So the basic steps to create a smart environment. We will talk about this, okay? And always in this direction, we have also strong connection with uh, Arduino, that is the company uh, nowadays uh, the, in charge of producing uh, boards, sensing boards, probably you know, you already, I don't know, use this kind of device, very small device that are able to easily sense and detect information from the environment and also to interact with the environment, for example, piloting uh, electrical engine, uh, valves, and things like that. So this company created a spin-off company with our university that is located in the engineering faculty, just the floor uh, below where I have my office. Um, the company there is specifically focused on software development. So Arduino is distributed all over the world. It is uh, in, uh, in Switzerland, the United States, uh, in northern part of Italy with regards to the production of the physical production of the device uh, in, uh, in Asia, in China and so on. And in Messina they have uh, this uh, company that develop the software for the boards and all the environment where these boards are integrated. So there is a strong connection with this uh, with this company and with them we develop several projects, initiatives, research development, uh, system um, creations and so on. Uh, possible applications where we are working now are related with the smart lighting, uh, so some kind of uh, uh, smart control of the lighting in a public environment in the main square of Messina, the different uh, lights uh, are controlled with this kind of technology, fleet management, precision agriculture, e-health, innovative building, I will tell you something about that, and individual protection devices. Are just some possible examples, so quite different one from the other, but that all belongs to a smart control environment, okay? So smart city, possible services that can be developed in that kind of, uh, of environment. Uh, okay, new way of thinking, why? Because uh, we are trying to include this kind of uh, concepts, um, technologies uh, uh, inside our master course that is called Engineering and Computer Science. Uh, it's, uh, we have a system that is a three, the bachelor, plus two, the master, so we are talking about the plus two. Uh, it's fully delivered in English, uh, so just to try to attract students uh, from uh, other, other countries. We have already some uh, foreign students there that attend the course regularly. Um, it is somehow innovative, not only for the English speaking, that is not such a big uh, <coughs> innovation, uh, but because it tries to put together, to merge the computer engineering on one side and computer science on the other. So inside the same course there are these two uh, 
um, these two um, different components that usually are kept somehow separated. Mm? So the more theoretical part, the more implementative engineering part, they are inside the same course and the students can autonomously decide if they want to go for an engineering uh, track or computer science track. So it's uh, to, uh, on their uh, decision. Uh, this is why it is called interclass because it joined together these two different uh, <coughs> worlds. Uh, there are a few examples like this in Italy, two or three, no more. So there is some kind of innovations also from this point of view. <coughs> These are some, uh, some uh, references that you can, uh, you can uh, access if you want to have more information, so you can send email. And of course, if there are questions, just stop me and I will try to answer to your, to your questions, okay? So, also, I also included some references that maybe you want to give a look if you want to go more in details on this kind of, uh, of things. Um, okay, so this second part is uh, uh, actually the main part of the presentation where we will go more in details with regards to the integration of the Internet of Things and the cyber world. So this is the overall uh, subject that we will cover in this, uh, in this lecture. I will try to provide some uh, tools, some methodologies that can be applied to manage and control a urban environment, a city, and to make this city a sort of smart, uh, smart city. Okay, so <coughs> we will talk about uh, what a smart city is, then I will try to focus a little bit on Arduino technology, what is new there, why is becoming so popular, and then uh, some application to this complex environment in terms of software defined city, so where the software is able to uh, provide the extra layer of intelligence to manage such huge amount of data, such complex environment. So we start with this uh, picture where this uh, architect, very famous, he was born about 100 years ago, introduced, Le Corbusier introduced new uh, development concepts, new way of building uh, a construction, uh, building an house, where he understood for the first time that this systems were very complex uh, and uh, they uh, et, um, were um, integrating different aspects. So for the first time he was talking about a new way of uh, architecture, of constructing these, uh, these uh, houses where different aspects had, had to be put together to create a better environment to make people happy, to feel better inside this, uh, this environment. So it is not easy to construct a building like this and also nowadays uh, it's uh, even uh, uh, more complicated if you consider um, old cities like the one we have in Europe where there are historical buildings, hundreds of years building, you cannot uh, um, modify very deeply, uh, you cannot destroy, probably in the United States they will destroy and build a new one, but they, there is a different uh, situation there. So this kind of approach to create a smart building is not probably the direction to go, it's not feasible practically. Um, why this? Because uh, we can have an al alternative way to proceed toward the direction to make a building smart, that is the software. So using software solution to integrate the different subsystems inside such buildings and try to define strategies to control the different aspects that are the electricity, are the water, are the air conditioning and uh, the presence or not of the people is the energy management. So a building is very complex. There are different things to be considered together. Probably to software we can define an environment, an overall infrastructure, a control system that is able to manage in a very smart way the behavior of the system itself. Okay? So this is the general idea 
And uh, this is a very simple and probably not even exhaustive way of uh, subsystems that you can find uh, in a building nowadays. In building, uh, for sure you have power distribution, electricity, you have in all the rooms everywhere, corridors, uh, you have uh, air conditioning, uh, you want to have some uh, lighting control mechanism uh, to decide if you need to keep all the lights on or not, depending on the lights uh, outdoor, the presence or not of people in the room, if there are no people, why should I keep the lights on? Um, then you have energy monitoring and control. Uh, maybe you have not this kind of problem here, but uh, in Europe uh, there is lots of uh, uh, attention towards uh, the production of energy from alternative sources, that are the sun, the wind, trying to save uh, as much as possible other kind of sources like oil. Okay? or gas. And in that case, uh, um, nowadays you try to transform the energy of the sun, for example, and then you want to store this energy in some batteries. Okay, so when the sun is not available, you can take the energy from the battery and use this energy for lighting, for example. Or maybe you can rent to the other apartment. Hmm? Or you can pass to the public service for the lighting uh, of a common square. So, also in that case, you need a control, very sophisticated control system, because this energy is flowing in different direction. So you have to optimize the way in which the energy should be divided and uh, uh, managed in such uh, systems. Uh, building management in general, renewable energy. So all these are some of the possible uh, problems and some systems that you can find when you want to consider a modern way of organizing uh, a building. And this picture is it's a mess, right? Yes, you don't understand anything, but it's there by intention, just to show how all these different uh, subsystems are very complex to integrate each other. And the only way that you can follow is to use uh, software. So you have uh, the physical building on, on one side, you have the cyber environment on the other, you need to collect some information from this subsystem to bring here to analyze this data, to derive some knowledge from the rough data that comes from the physical system, then you have to make probably some model to understand how things are moving, are, are progressing, and then maybe you have to wait some strategy, you are back to the physical system again, to control the system. Hmm? So this is more or less the, the situation, and uh, just to have uh, an idea, we have a complex system where there is uh, uh, control system, alarms, uh, the lighting, there is the air conditioning, security, uh, energy management and so on. Different sub-subsystems sub, sub nowadays that are somehow separated one from the other. We have these things more or less in our apartment, but they are completely independent one from, from the other. Well, instead, what we should like to do is try to integrate as much as possible to have uh, integration, one subsystem with the other, that allow to collect data, to make some kind of uh, analysis, uh, to make some automation, and understand how the data from this subsystem can be useful to control and manage and pilot the other one and the way around. So these things can be done uh, using I think software, or better, an integration of software with new technology, new devices that are able easily to detect and monitor and control the system. This trend is clear. Um, new buildings are built uh, very often, maybe small cities again. You decide to define new cities. Why? Because there is also <coughs> a global urbanization trend where the people keep on moving from the countryside in the city and this is a uh, uh, forecast uh, very clearly the people living in the countryside uh, will decrease uh, and those instead moving in the city will keep on increasing step by step. So these new requirements uh, are extremely stringent 
and there are some, uh, some um, forecasts uh, what is going to happen in China where uh, uh, in the next 10, 20 years uh, they will build new houses, new cities uh, uh, for uh, overall uh, sides uh, more or less equivalent to 10 times the size of the city of New York. Okay? And something similar also in India. You know that in these days uh, there are some meetings in, uh, in um, where are they? I don't remember, in France probably, uh, I don't know, they are uh, all the, the, um, the, the boss of the different countries in, uh, in the world somehow are discussing about uh, uh, pollution, uh, about the environment, uh, trying to define new strategy to decrease the pollution in the world, maybe using less uh, uh, energy from oil, uh, controlling the cars, uh, providing new services so that you can have electric cars and so on. So they are trying to find new agreement because uh, it is evident that the uh, environment is changing. The, uh, we, are, we assist always more often to kind of a critical uh, situation where it is not just raining, it's a thunderstorm, where the, the rivers, uh, they exit from their path and they cover the city. So very strange things are happening because they, somehow we are impacting too much on the environment. So controlling systems that are able to understand what is happening uh, and may help in uh, defining new strategy in uh, reducing the impact that we have on the environment itself. Uh, it is not just a case that I was mentioning these two countries because uh, United States, China and India are the three uh, countries in the world that produce more pollution. Um, probably this one uh, is the third one, but if you divide by the number of population, it is about one, mi one billion of people it, per single uh, habitants in India is not so high, but overall it is uh, country no number three. And consider that in this country there are about uh, 300 million people that they have not uh, energy. They have not electrical uh, energy in their apartment. So very soon uh, they will enter the, the market. So they will be provided with electricity and uh, new services. So the situation will become even worse, very, very rapidly. We are talking about uh, years, not uh, hundreds of years. Okay, so overall the objective that we have is uh, better living in our cities, in our environment. Uh, we, have to, we want to have uh, um, uh, new uh, advanced um, environment where you can uh, work, live, enjoy. So there are all these input on one side and uh, on the other we have that the smart cities are very complex environment not only in terms of the number of people that lives there, that can easily reach a million, tens of million of people. New Delhi is about uh, 18 million people, Cairo 19 million, Mexico uh, 18 million, so we are talking about incredible number in one single city, okay? And the situation will become even, even worse. So in a city you have a different subsystem, in the same way as in the single building. Hmm? You have different subsystems that somehow are not so integrated each other. And also in that case, so we are moving from the single building to a set of buildings that is a city. Also in that case, we want to have a mechanism to integrate the different subsystems to, together because they are not independent one from the other. So I'm talking about smart houses, smart building, and we have uh, energy management system, uh, we have a smart energy production system that support uh, our, our requirements, uh, we have a smart transportation system, and so on. So the situation is really complicated. Different integration, and this is a picture I took last week, 
in, uh, in India where this is normal, this is not something so unusual. You, you, okay, you have an idea of what is there. And, uh, there are uh, one billion of people and very soon they will also use uh, cars, uh, motorbikes, uh, in a, in a always increasing way, so at the moment it is not so common to have a car, but you already see what is happening. And there are many other examples, many other cities where traffic control and where pollution, in these days in, uh, in uh, Beijing, uh, people are recommended to stay inside with the windows closed because uh, the level of pollution in the air is uh, uh, 15 times more than the maximum level that is uh, allowable, okay? So this is the situation. You really have this fog everywhere and you cannot see more than 50 meters. It is not uh, just uh, once per year, it's becoming very often the situation. Also in New Delhi last week it was like this, during the morning till 11, 11 and a half, it was like this. I thought strange, there is the fog in the morning. It was not fog from humidity, it was from fog from pollution. Okay? Okay. We have some examples of uh, uh, environment, uh, or better, of the system, infrastructure, computing infrastructure, ICT infrastructure, that try to monitor what is happening in the environment, like in this case, this is the city of, uh, if I remember, some Beijing probably, yes, they are making something, this is San Francisco, where they try to, to monitor the environment, uh, pollution, uh, energy requirements, uh, uh, amount of energy produced by solar panel uh, against those produced from oil. So they try to monitor the, 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 these things, but they are just examples. In general, what we can uh, learn from this uh, is that to make a city smart, we have uh, three actions that should be done. One is to monitor, we have to be able to understand what is happening there. So we have to collect information data and this data can be collected through sensors that should be distributed and you need a huge amount of these sensors. One possibility is to have a, a complex sensing device, I don't know here but sometime in Italy you find some blocks, there is a small house, maybe like this, two meters by two, where there are very complex and sophisticated devices there that monitor the quality of the air, humidity, temperature and so on. For example, in my city there are, if I remember, five or six of these. They are very expensive, they put somewhere. Hmm? This is a possibility. Another possibility is to supply the the precision in, the, in detecting the real measure with a huge number of sensors, maybe not very expensive, not so sophisticated, but they are very cheap. So you can have many kind of sensors distributed in the environment, we are talking about thousands and thousands of these sensors that regularly collect some data and transfer to some complex system that is able to store this data and then to analyze and understand what is happening there. So in any case, this uh, sensing, observation and then communication is important. You have to know what is happening, otherwise uh, there is no strategy, no, nothing to do. Then there is this second M, that means model. Model means that you should be able to understand what is happening for this huge amount of data. This huge amount of data generate the so-called problem big data, okay? So we have a big data situation where there are so many sensors distributed in the environment and the amount of data that you are generating is so large that traditional uh, uh, technological approach to store this data and process are not uh, good enough anymore. So there are different techniques that can be put in place to monitor that huge amount of data. But in any case, then you have to uh, elaborate this data and usually you need a model, a model that is able to um, represent the evolution of the system according to the input uh, data that you have and with this model you try to understand, to forecast what is going to happen. 
okay? So you may have a model for forecast, a model for pollution, a model for energy uh, requirements in the next 24 days, uh, hours, or one day, or two days, something like that. And when you have this uh, simulation of what is going to happen, then you can try to manage your system, the third M, and you are back to the system itself because here you understand what is the uh, better, uh, the, the best uh, um, some parts of uh, a smart city. Uh, so we may have some kind of device for uh, uh, energy management, smart meters, uh, gas, uh, or uh, some um, um, device for parking, uh, um, and so on. So there are different possibilities. They are already there. Hmm? They are in place in some city, probably they are a little bit more advanced than others. But this kind of sensing network, this is the name they are, sensor networks, are put in place. And there are already hundreds of these devices distributed. Usually, uh, till now, they are separated. I am the owner of the sensor networks related with, uh, uh, with, with uh, um, traffic management. I, I have a network with different cameras, okay, the city hall for example, or some institute that is uh, collecting data for research. Usually they are very different, they don't use similar standardized communication protocol. It's very difficult to integrate this, uh, this data. Uh, collect and, and uh, integrate. And there are even some examples, very sad examples, where these data are even transferred with a lot of delay. There was uh, some uh, couple of years ago in Rome, so we are not talking about a strange city, Rome, and there was a very unusual situation with lots of snow. The city was completely covered with the snow, and uh, we are not used in driving uh, with the snow, ice, or people got confused, all the cars, uh, there were lots of accidents. And the problem was there, they were able to detect the information from sensors distributed in the environment, forecast uh, prevision. They were able to make the model and to understand that the thunderstorm was coming, the snow was there, but it was Friday night and they were not able to communicate the information. So the information remained in the research center, they didn't send it to the city hall. So the city hall didn't, did not uh, actuate any, any, any action to solve the problem. For you it's normal because you are used in this, but for Rome the snow is very, 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 very unusual, maybe one every ten years. Okay? So the disaster came. And we have other kind, uh, other examples of strange situation like uh, um, uh, energy management plant, oil production system. Uh, these are some examples where uh, where I live, where somehow four years ago, five years ago, uh, lots of rain, so disaster like this, and uh, house were destroyed. Several people died. So. Uh, it is, uh, these are examples where you really need uh, a sensing uh, uh, infrastructure that is able to understand what is happening. And probably then at least you can inform people, okay, leave, go away, something bad is going to happen. Instead they were in the house just they doing the usual life and these things were happening because nobody was able to understand uh, in advance that this kind of disaster was going to, to happen. And a situation like this are also in very advanced cities. In this case uh, um, we are in the underground, okay? All water here is swimming. And this was due to the Sandy hurricane in the United States disaster also in their case. But there are other examples for example, uh, when uh, cameras uh, that are always sensors are able to understand, detect, control and provide security solution, safety, uh, like during the marathon Boston there was some people killed there but they were able to catch this guy because of controlling the different camera going back to the data that were collected and stored somewhere they were able to analyze and understand uh, what was happening there. And I think that nowadays we can even add to this kind of uh, sensing device, static device, we can also add uh, your PDA, PDA, my PDA, 
they are some kind of sensing device. So the citizen himself, herself, is a sort of sensor because we are able to collect some, some information from the physical sensor that we have on our system and we can also provide inputs to the system through action that we usually do, for example, in social network. I'm talking about Facebook, I'm talking about Twitter and things like that, where we write some messages, something. There are some studies that try to analyze the huge amount of messages and data that are generated by these citizen sensors, and they understand, extract knowledge from this that is useful to understand how people are moving in the city, what is considered to be a safe area, a dangerous area, and things like that. Okay? So the citizen is in the loop because it is able, in any case, to provide information. Hmm? The information that you give to the social network so, represents the real value for the social network itself. It is for free, and we all agree that we don't pay anything for Facebook and things like that. But the, we really pay through the data that we generate. For them, are a great value because they are able to analyze this data and construct our profile. So they know better than us what we do, what we think, what we buy, um, what are our interests and so on. So these kind of files for each of us are the profile of the different users. The more users you have, the higher is the value of the company itself. So this is why Facebook is, uh, the value of Facebook is strictly related to the amount of users of Facebook. Because each user has a value, okay? So when you use the system, of course, you have to be careful what you write, what you do, because these informations are there and can be used for different uh, possible applications. Okay, citizen sensors, cars is another example I just read yesterday that there are, uh, I don't remember which kind of brand producing a new car, where this uh, sensing device are even more sophisticated. The car itself can detect lots of information automatically, autonomously, will send to the car producer, but the car can talk with the other car if they are in opposite direction, they can exchange information about traffic conditions, things like that. So this is another example where sensors are distributed, they are on the move and they collect information and provide inputs to sophisticated algorithms that can analyze this data and understand what is happening and that to add some action. Maybe Sorry? Test. Uh, maybe, yes, yes. This is not the only one. There are also other, uh, other um, car producers that are working about that. There is a special research uh, uh, area that is uh, vehicular networks, uh, uh, sensor vehicular networks, where they make uh, special uh, investigation or research activity on uh, cars and the sensors, how these cars communicate, how the information is uh, uh, floating in a distributed environment and so on. So our cars already collect a huge amount of data, uh, not always they directly transfer to somebody, but if you have a UMTS uh, uh, device in your car, they can uh, run time to send information about how the car is uh, moving, what you are doing, how you are driving, and uh, many, many, many information like this. Okay, so uh, I hope that at this point it's clear that we have uh, really a uh, great amount of uh, source of information. This information is usually rough data, uh, difficult to understand, but they, we are talking about uh, petabyte, exabyte of data. Hmm? So you can imagine, thousands and thousands of sensors that every few seconds they send some uh, short string, each multiplied for these 10,000, 20,000 sensors, this is what we are talking about. The amount of information that you have to store and then process is really enormous, big data. And cloud computing can provide some uh, interesting uh, solutions to deal with such a huge amount of data. 
We already know this technology, directly or indirectly, we are using it uh, through Facebook, Gmail, Google Drive, uh, Twitter, all these kind of uh, services are based on uh, cloud computing because uh, you are not uh, aware of uh, how the physical infrastructure is organized, where the data are stored, if there are or there are not backup mechanism, uh, security solution, we have no idea about that. We always work at the very top level, at the application level, and all the details behind are completely hidden. Hmm? So this is the uh, value of the cloud computing approach that help you in uh, automatically organize the infrastructure in terms of computing, storage device, and for, from what we are discussing, probably we can also include the sensing device. Hmm? So you have the computing part, you have the storage part, and you have also the sensing. So you have the three basic elements of any computing system, CPU, disk, and I.O. So if we are able to create an environment where you can set up your infrastructure very easily, depending on the specific uh, uh, goal that you have. No? You want to deliver a service, then you, can, you need a way to communicate with your system and say, okay, this is the kind of service I want to deliver, I need this amount of uh, computing power, this amount of storage, this kind of uh, sensing device, so distributed, able to provide this kind of information. Okay, help me in identifying these resources. According to cloud computing principles, you identify all these resources, you aggregate in a cloud, you create your infrastructure, and then you deploy your service, and the system starts. When you are done, you release everything, somebody else will rent this uh, equipment and deliver a new service. Okay? So this is the scenario that I have in mind. <coughs> With regards to the cloud, I will not go too much in these details, but uh, probably you know, if you don't know, I tell you, we have these uh, three layers, the infrastructure as a service, the platform as a service, the software as a service layer, that um, isolate different functionalities depending on the kind of impact that they have. So here we have the infrastructure level where you talk about physical machine, virtual environment uh, to emulate physical machine on, on top of a given hardware. Here instead you don't <coughs> access this kind of details, but you are provided with some API that help you to, to de de develop your service on top of a given infrastructure. At this level, we already talk about uh, software, services. So you are not aware about this kind of details, but you use Gmail, you use Facebook, that's it. And below, you have all these different aspects. Hmm? So what we want to do, for example, is to move, to, to work always at the infrastructure as a, a service level, including not only computing and storage, but also sensing and actuation device. Okay? At that point, the infrastructure is there. There is everything, all that you may imagine. You want to automatically set up this infrastructure, develop the basic services, and the top level service to provide services in complex environment such as uh, smart city. Uh, okay. OpenStack is uh, an interesting uh, um, interesting middleware uh, to create infrastructure according to cloud computing principle. Uh, it is an open source project. It was created, uh, it is uh, going on nowadays in Europe and it involves a huge amount of companies that provide, deliver services on top of this infrastructure. And there are a thousand and thousand of developers that contribute to uh, evolve the different components of this, uh, of this, uh, of this software. Um, it is a, nowadays very um, popular and there are lots of applications on top of OpenStack to deliver even complex services. It is organized in a compute 
part, networking module, storage module, and the sensing module that we will add very soon. Um, it is organized in different blocks that somehow isolate different functionalities, uh, like for example Neutron that is devoted to the uh, networking aspects, uh, Silometer that is, that is able to collect information from different devices, and so on. Um, so in general, what I think is that if you get used to this kind of uh, uh, environment, probably it's a good investment from your side, because there are already many, many users, uh, companies that look for experts in this kind of technology that want to develop solution on top of this, uh, on this technology. So it could be interesting to understand how it works to install and uh, execute some possible uh, services. What follows is a short list of some uh, examples of applications uh, uh, through projects, real projects, um, where we have been involved uh, and it covers different aspects, but the idea that is in common is the one we are talking about. It's complex environment, sensors to monitor, store and process this data and then back to the system itself to implement some strategy. This Sigma project was over last uh, uh, end of October, so now, radically. Uh, it was uh, two years project. Uh, Italian-wide, okay? So several companies, uh, research institute, uh, university, about 20 partners there, very uh, complex, articulated. And uh, the, the, the goal of this project was to set up a uh, um, mechanism and a software solution to um, control different sensor networks belonging to uh, independent and uh, autonomous administrative uh, uh, entities, um, so to collect the information, to understand what is happening, and then to actuate some strategy. Examples. Um, where, where we live in Sicily, there is uh, a big volcano, it's the biggest uh, active volcano in Europe. Um, every couple of months uh, there is some uh, activity there, so some smoke, some uh, vibration, some small, small earthquakes, so we are used with that. And uh, one application of the project is the following. Uh, the volcano is monitored with about 100 sensors that are managed by the Geophysical uh, National Institute. So there is the sensor network that uh, collects uh, um, lots of information, mainly related with the uh, small, very small vibration of the mountain itself. So when these vibrations are uh, detected, then there is uh, an analysis of the intensity of this uh, vibration that allow to understand uh, the power of the possible eruption that is going to come. And they, uh, then they uh, an analyze and detect the um, flow of uh, ash that is coming from the volcano. Then they get information from the, from the uh, forecast uh, institute to understand how the wind is moving, what is going to happen in the next three, four, eight hours, because they want to predict the amount of ash that is coming from the volcano and how it will move and when it will fall down, because when it falls down it covers everything with this black ash. Everything, all the streets, house, roof, everything. It is very difficult to drive in that condition because uh, the car slips uh, very easily. So if you understand all, all of this, you can inform po the population through other kind of sensors, your, their PDA, that they should not take that highway, they have to take this alternative path and so on. Okay? So this is a clear example of this uh, feedback system. And this was uh, experimented and provided in this uh, project. This other project called Simone is uh, uh, a kind of subset of the previous one that is said uh, strictly focused on uh, electricity management. So here electricity is produced by uh, solar panel, windmills, and uh, you try to understand uh, what you will need in the next uh, 24, 48 hours 
to understand if you have to buy uh, electricity from the traditional providers or not. And if you have to buy the amount that you have to buy, because you make a prediction and then you buy. If you use more than you were buying, the extra, you will be charged an incredible amount of money. So you want to be very, very precise in this. And in this case, the sensors are there to monitor the quality of the energy, to understand if there will be sun, there will be wind, and the intensity of the sun, the intensity of the wind. So this is this other example. Reservoir was probably the very first European project on cloud computing and um, we were working here mainly at the infrastructure level and as a university we were specifically focused on uh, managing the computer center to uh, deploy all the infrastructure, cloud-based infrastructure and all the services that were developed in the, in the project. And we start introducing the concept of federation, that in cloud means that the resources that you're going to use do not belong to a single provider, but to different providers at the same time. So you have agreement between different providers, so that when I say I need this amount of computation, I am not talking only with Amazon, like I can do today, but maybe I'm talking with Amazon, with the University of Kazan and some other providers and they take some resources here, some there, some there. I can do because there are federation agreement between the different providers. This is the concept behind that. Uh, Vision Cloud instead moves a little bit up and uh, here we concentrate on the data management. So here the problem is how to deal with a huge amount of data and uh, is the application that should be moved nearby the data or the data nearby the application? So these are the kind of questions that we try to address in this project. What is that in Cloud Web that is uh, uh, running? We just completed the second year of uh, activity now in November. Uh, here we are working at the application level. So here we talk about uh, adaptation. So the adaptation of the application to the infrastructure, or if possible, or the infrastructure to the specific requirement of the, of the application. Okay? In Beacon, we are focusing on federation. So here everything is related to federation, specifically federation between Open Nebula, that is a, a software and infrastructure provided by some Spanish uh, partner, and uh, OpenStack. So here the problem is how to federate these two different domains, how to let them dialogue and uh, interchange information so that you can take uh, uh, resources from uh, Open Nebula and at the same time from uh, OpenStack and use them in uh, your cloud that has been created runtime according to your specific requirements. Frontier City is another project where it is more application oriented. Uh, by definition here you have to use OpenStack and Fireware that is uh, an infrastructure already available at European level where uh, uh, several data centers are connected to each other and you can use resources from all these uh, data centers. They use this open stack uh, environment and uh, in this case uh, the European Commission launched periodically some uh, initiatives uh, where they say okay I'm looking for uh, ideas related to uh, fleet management, to e-health, uh, to energy management. So different uh, um, uh, companies apply, there is a selection process and then they have to develop the solution on this infrastructure. Okay? We are in charge of the, of the traffic uh, module, in this uh, traffic management module. Okay, so we are back to this picture, integration of uh, physical world with the cyber world, and the previous project somehow touch these different, uh, these different aspects, okay? So smart device that communicate each other and with the physical system. Communication protocols such as COP and others such as All Join, that is uh, a big uh, uh, group of industries, research center and whatever, that uh, provide solution to have the objects to recognize each other and to talk exchanging information. Uh, the limitation is that 
all the device should be connected to the same network, okay? So you have to be on the same local area networks, otherwise it doesn't work. But with a solution I will show you, this problem has been solved, I will tell later on. So the situation where we are is the following. We have this physical system, we have some device that are able to detect the information, and this device has to get sense the environment somehow, then actuate some action. So new sensing devices are quite sophisticated and they have also computational power on board. So this kind of uh, approach can even be uh, developed further so that you have the physical board on the physical system and maybe the logic that is move a little bit on the cyber world that is uh, where your cloud uh, system is, uh, is in production. And in that case, uh, what is going to happen are different uh, possibilities. So I can uh, simply use uh, this uh, as a pass-through mechanism because uh, there is no real logic here, but uh, everything uh, stands inside. Then, I can uh, move further and I can imagine something where there is a complex event processing that is done in my board, in the virtual part, okay? So I am moving something, uh, trying to move on the edge, okay? Or if the board is uh, very sophisticated, I can even imagine that I can inject some uh, a specific software, some custom logic on the board itself so that it detects the information, it makes some preliminary computation here, maybe at wait autonomously, or only sometime I will transfer the information to the upper layer. What I'm saying is that this board has nowadays com complex and powerful enough that we can imagine to move some part of the computation of the logic to the edge of the system. You don't need to have uh, all the data always transferred to the cyber part, but you can even implement some basic logic already at the board level. It depends if it is able to receive software, what kind of power is there, and so on. But there are different uh, uh, physical solutions that allow to do this. Hmm? So, uh, if this is true, then we are here, where there is uh, the physical part, where you have the physical board that detects the information, then can actuate some action. The control logic that is somehow move at the cloud level, but in some case I can still have some computation here. It depends. So I need mechanism to interact with this board, to select them, to group in a cloud, sensor cloud. I need mechanism if it is possible to inject, to inject some uh, code in the board itself, so the same board, the same hardware can be used to provide different kind of software services, or better, or services through software, right? But we already do this, because in your PDA you have hundreds of uh, apps. So depending on the apps that you are uh, executing, your system is behaving in a way or in a different way. So the same things you can imagine with these boards. The same board with some injected software that will operate in a way a little bit different from previous, where there was another kind of service that was going to, to develop. So at this point we can introduce the concept of software defined everything because of it is up to the software to specialize and, uh, and define the kind of services, application that we can deliver. And we can talk already about software-defined radio, software-defined networking. These are concepts already perfectly working, uh, that are there, that are being used. There are companies, Akamai is uh, dealing with uh, about 20% of the overall internet traffic in the world, creating software-defined network on top of the physical internet, okay? So they try to distribute the information in different data centers and they do this all through software. 
so we can also talk about software defined restaurant, software defined data center, software defined building and blah blah blah. So what I want to mention is that the software is, uh, is, uh, is acquiring an always increasing role in defining and controlling a complex system such as uh, a smart city. Um, the scenario that we will have at this point is something like this. We have different kind of sensors and actuators, and then you have uh, contributors, maybe a single uh, person with some sensors, and he says, okay, it's available, if you want, you can use. Maybe there are uh, the processing part of the board, and piloting this de device, collecting the data, and then processing with the computing part and the storage part already managed by, by OpenStack. Uh, I will pass you some pointers, so if you want to go more in detail, there are some papers on this. But we are uh, imagining some uh, sensing device where you have the control part, hmm? and there is the processing part, and inside the processing part we have this uh, component that is called the lighting road engine, okay, that is able to interact with this uh, block to detect information, to make some computation, and then probably to add some action, at the same time to interact with the cyber world. So there is a communication channel for internal services, that is the one that you establish immediately as soon as you switch on the board, and then you can have different kind of services that are actuated with different communication channel, okay, where the information goes in this direction and in that direction. The way in which this is done is through um, uh, is through what is it reverse tunneling mechanism uh, because because of the scenario is the following the cyber world is there then you buy a new Arduino device you open you put the electricity you switch on at that point uh, is the Arduino device that has to communicate with the cyber world saying hello, here I am, then the communication starts from the device itself, it goes to the cyber world and this communication channel is created according to one mechanism and then depending on what I want to do with this device then I create this yellow communication link where the information service by service is sent through. So, this is the way in which it works, more detail we can see later. Um, what I wanted to just show, this is the overall picture of the system, where you have uh, the user here, and you have the iotronic module here, and you have uh, uh, this conductor and database where the different uh, boards are stored, with the information they have, the capability they have, um, and these are all the mechanisms, communication mechanism I was talking about. Okay, you have to read some papers to go more in details with these things, the different API. Uh, another important thing that we can obtain with that kind of solution is this virtual networking. So we have uh, physical device distributed around, and using this VAMP mechanism, we can create a kind of short circuit between the different devices hmm, uh, such that we are not aware anymore of the physical network where the devices are connected. So we use this communication channel that goes through any kind of firewall, uh, NAT mechanism and so on, and we create the... no. I have not the figure here, but uh, you can imagine something like this, where there is uh, another board that makes the same kind of communication and enters inside this uh, server. And then it's the server itself that creates the contact between this and this. So logically, these two devices are on the same network. Okay? At that point, for example, you can use all join. All join can be used because they are logically connected to the same uh, local networks, so you can use all join, they can interact with each other. An example could be 
a board like this here, another one uh, in Messina, and uh, if the board here detects uh, temperature below 5 degrees, then uh, a light will be switched on in Messina automatically, because they are logically on the same network, and they can easily interact one with the other. Okay, uh, well, evolution and things like that. Second part, are you tired? I will be fast, okay? No more than another 10 minutes, just to complete the picture. Because this first part is mainly related to a general architecture. We are also talking about real implementation with OpenStack and things like that. But we regard the single board, I was just imagining a board with these two components, the controlling part and the computing part. Okay? Now let's try to see how we close the loop and we have all the different pieces in the right place. Uh, I start with this uh, third industrial revolution. That is what? Is this is intended by someone, this uh, maker movement. So maker are uh, person that are uh, able to make things, to construct real things. And um, they are growing a lot. It's a kind of uh, uh, set of um, uh, distributed uh, groups all over the world where they sometimes meet together, they change experience, uh, and they do these things. They construct, they prepare, they, they do some real object. Uh, I'm not specifically talking about uh, ICT or uh, software, uh, hardware, any kind of objects, okay? Um, they have some uh, space where they meet, they have some fair where they show the results that they have produced. Some of them are interesting, some other are only some kind of curiosity. Uh, probably you don't need a truck that is making this fire, but uh, okay, they made these things and they were happy to show. Okay? Okay. Now, on the other side, we have the um, hackers world, people that are able to play with software. So they don't construct anything, but they are able to construct something in terms of software that is able to interact with the real objects. And uh, Arduino is uh, probably the technology that uh, allow to bring together these two apparently separated community, the makers and the software developers, the hackers on the other side. Because through software you can interact with the external world, piloting different kind of action, understanding what is happening and controlling lights, uh, uh, um, uh, bulbs, uh, uh, electrical engine and things like that. So this kind of technology is very cheap but is also very powerful because easily with a very simple code allow people that are not engineers, they are not experts, they never study computer engineering, software development, uh, uh, software engineering, no. But if you read this kind of code, probably anybody is able to understand. It just says, okay, some initialization of this kind of output will be the pin number 13. And then repeat what? Write high level on pin 13, wait for some time, write low, and repeat this several times. So very easily this is just flashing a light. Hmm? So for the makers, this kind of technology is important because easily they can control and uh, create new kind of objects, very sophisticated and very easily, very easily. So also at the elementary school they are adopting this technology to teach and train little kids to make simple, simple kind of experiments. And of course they are not aware about uh, operating system and all this theory, but very easily they can write these things and make something practical. Okay? And people get very satisfied when they see that the lights is uh, flashing, when they see that the engine is moving or not, they immediately see the results of what they are doing. Okay, then Arduino 1. Lenino is what? Is a project 
where um, we are trying to make even simple the integration between the universe of the hackers and the universe of the makers. And the, this is done um, through Lineino that provides a set of uh, components uh, like open hardware, open software, embedded development environment, uh, interaction with the cloud, lots of people working there. So Lenino represents uh, a set of uh, uh, elements that can be easily integrated together following uh, uh, this kind of philosophy. Uh, there is the module that provides the computation and also the Wi-Fi connection and this module may interact with different kind of uh, microcontroller units produced for example by Atmel or Freescale or ST Microelectronics so we are separating the uh, microcontrolling part and the computing part on the other side and you can keep the same logic here and you can change the technology with regards to the microcontroller unit on the other side without big problems. And uh, at the same time, that component is able to provide wireless access. So one of these boards is also an access point once you uh, switch it on. And they can communicate also through wireless, the different devices, one with the other. So the new uh, uh, device uh, from Arduino, they have this logic. You have the microcontroller unit, you have the microprocessor, there is a Wi-Fi connection, all in one single board. Hmm? So there is one part that is specifically focused on interacting with the external world, with the I.O input output uh, with a digital conversion uh, analog, uh, analogic digital and the way around and the other part where there is open WRT that is Linux uh, operating system and you can uh, execute your code and pilot and automatically dialogue with the controlling part. Lenino IO is uh, this kind of uh, evolution where uh, the communication between the microprocessing part, the microcontrolling part, is uh, even further extended. In the sense that the different uh, I.O. device uh, that may use different kind of protocol, analog, digital converter, GPIO, PWM, I2C, different way of uh, receiving signal or actuating some action, um, are, um, are managed according to Linux file. So, these devices are seen as uh, Linux files that are logically connected inside your processing part. So, through file mechanism, you can easily communicate with these uh, objects that represent the external world. Okay? So, Ledino IO provides all these mechanisms, making even simpler the interaction with the external world. Okay? And these are some, uh, some uh, examples where, for example, here we say that, okay, uh, uh, mo mo modify the motor speed, there is some speed uh, connected, and on this file, okay, it says bring this value. Hmm? Or, for example, read from cut, no? read through this file, the value that is connected there is another port and so on. So, very easy uh, from this point of view. Um, the stack that is behind there, these are different products from, uh, from uh, Arduino. This is the UN device, this is Arduino uh, One, it's the same, but uh, the, the size is exactly half, half of this. Hmm? Um, you have this uh, possibility to extend the functionality of this board uh, just uh, adding shields, one on top of the other. So you can take these things and put a shield here that is automatically connected to provide some extension, like for example uh, GPS functionality, like for example UMTS connectivity. Okay, so you already have uh, 
uh, Ethernet connection you have Wi-Fi but if you want to have uh, UMTS you buy a UMTS board and you plug on top of it automatically you extend the functionality of the board so they can grow in this way hmm? so at the first layer we have the MCU based device hmm? then you have the module that provides the processing unit and the Wi-Fi connection on top of this you have uh, Lenino with the OpenWRT is the Linux release uh, that is being executed on these uh, components. Then you have Lenino IO that helps you to virtualize the different input output port like, uh, like a file. Then you have IDEINO that is the, uh, the IDE. The, the, the developing environment for the programmer that allow you in a graphical way to combine all these things and then on top of this you have the different kind of, of applications that belongs to many many different possible areas okay so the idea that we had of software defined everything now can become a special application in terms of uh, cities so we can talk about software defined city where we extend uh, this approach uh, and there are many kind of controllers like the one we're talking about there is the software on the other side that is uh, cyber world open stack uh, and so on and somehow we have all the elements that represents our picture and we are back to this figure where all the different parts now are filled with real things. Feed feedback system, we already talked about that. These are the technology that we are using at the moment, OpenStack, then we have extension through VAMP, Arduino, Arduino Uno, we are also interacting with the Raspberry Pi, it's a different producer of components, but of course for us it's easier to dialogue with Arduino because we work together, we have this company there, so it's very simple to interact with them and we do every day, every day, all the students and uh, ourselves uh, doing that. Example where we are using this uh, technology, like SmartMe, as I mentioned at the beginning, this was a crowdfunding initiative, so we asked for some money to the internet because we had this idea to create an infrastructure in the city uh, that can be used for different uh, services. But we didn't want to impose this project. Uh, it, 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 we didn't want to, the people consider this project as uh, an initiative from the university. No, it's something that should start from the bottom. So we wanted to create this community of people that had somehow interest in this kind of infrastructure. This is why we uh, talk with Appela, is one possible engine uh, crowdfunding engine available on the internet. We explain what we wanted to do, we launched these initiatives asking for 15,000 euro and after a couple of months we collected about 34,000 uh, euros from uh, different uh, supporters. They are single citizens, students, researchers also from abroad, some companies, some of them also, this one is from uh, United States, this one is from Spain, and associations like uh, City Hall, uh, company dealing with the public transportation system and, and, and so on. So we somehow created a first group of uh, about 80 people interested in this kind of uh, ideas that supported in different way from a uh, few euros to even more. The American company uh, put about uh, 7,000 euros or more, so it depends. And we started this project. The project is to create the environment, different uh, sensing device distributed all around, data collected, in, uh, stored in the cloud, processed in the cloud, and then maybe results back to the citizenship, to the citizen, and so on. Uh, applications are related to possible areas, here there are some of them. I will tell you what is already available and what we are going to work uh, in the next uh, weeks, next, uh, ne ne next months. Um, okay, this is clear, blah, blah, blah. We are back to this picture. Okay, so 
This is the um, monitoring device that we are distributing in the city. Inside you cannot see, but there is uh, an uh, Arduino UN board with a um, shield that is called uh, Tinker Kit. It's a sort of extension where you have uh, lots of pin where you can connect uh, like um, uh, temperature, humidity, noise, uh, uh, lighting uh, and many others. So these are the ones that we provide. So by default there will be about uh, 50 of these devices distributed in the city with four or five uh, different kind of sensing uh, um, components there that starts collecting this data. These data are uh, sent to Fireware, that is the, uh, the, um, the OpenStack based infrastructure at the European level. They are stored somewhere in the cloud and uh, you can get the, 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 the data. The idea is that all, everything is open, so open hardware, Arduino, open software, open stack is open and also the data are open so we collect this data we store somewhere you can assess you can download this data and use analyze and develop a new service hmm? so the idea is to stimulate the interest of uh, other groups in assessing this data and creating new services that could be of interest for the for the city other example is, are, is this one where there is the Arduino UN, there is this board that provides uh, uh, GPS and uh, GSM connectivity and this is the Tinker Kit. So these things then is organized in a box and is put on the buses. While the bus moves every 15 seconds, he collects information about uh, position, speed, uh, acceleration, temperature, uh, pollution, uh, noise, things like that, and send the information again through OpenStack to the cyber world where the things are stored. The company itself will use only some of these information so related on the, on the position, speed and so on, because they want to understand uh, the delay that a um, customer has to wait in the bus station uh, till the bus comes. Okay? So they know exactly where the bus are and they can predict the time to reach each bus stop. At the same time, they can understand the congestion level in the street, depending on the speed of the bus itself. So there are some algorithms that are able to understand uh, the crowd uh, in the street itself. But at the same time, they, they collect other kind of information, such as uh, humidity, temperature, and so on. They are not directly interested, but they contribute to the community, and they put this information always in an open format everybody can use. So you can have, for example, um, a surface on, on the map of the city that tells you where, is, uh, where are the areas where that are more noisy, or the areas that are more polluted, and things like that. Uh, this application instead uh, try to uh, include uh, citizen as uh, sensors. We already talked about citizen sensors. Um, the idea is to develop a service to identify promptly the potholes in the, in, the, in the streets. So you use your PDA, there is an app that you can uh, install, and this app detects the sudden variation of uh, acceleration along the z-axis. So while you are driving, if you enter a uh, pothole, there is the sudden variation and you report. If there are several uh, reports from the same position, latitude and longitude, then we say here there is a pothole. And the entity is a function of the uh, amount, the size, the entity of the variation of the acceleration. In a couple of days, uh, we mark the different holes in the streets with uh, a group of 40 students that went around doing their usual life, but with this application running. Okay? So it's a, a simple example of crowd sourcing, where you have uh, input from the crowd. Okay? Uh, this is uh, uh, another example where uh, we are using some of this technology in a different environment. This is a museum um, and, uh, in, dedicated to uh, 
Gutuso is a famous painter in Italy, uh, painter and also some sculptures are there. So they wanted to monitor the temperature and the humidity inside the museum and we are using exactly the same solution in Smart MAE, the one I showed you, the first one at the beginning. And they also wanted to have uh, an alternative way of visiting this museum. So uh, using your PDA you will have uh, a personalized path inside the museum, so you go in room by room, not, not essentially in a sequential way, it depends on who I am, the interest I have, the, the time I have, so the path will be constructed real time and the information of uh, each uh, p paintings and sculpture will be filtered and uh, organized for myself. So if we are both looking at the same picture, probably we will receive different information. If I am a kid, I have something in the form of cartoon and something like that. If I am an expert in history, maybe I will have lots of information about history. Okay, so it's an example of Internet of Things and different technology used there. If you come to Sicily, you will uh, visit the museum and you will have an idea. Uh, other applications we are working on that are smart lighting. The city hall gave access to the lighting in the main square of the city to implement some solution that allow to dim, switch on, switch off the different lights, depending, for example, on the lights in outdoor. People, if they are there or not, maybe I can switch some of these lights. If there is nobody there, I can switch and save some energy so we can make some experiment there. Smart parking is another application. We are using some uh, special kind of sensors so we can understand if uh, in a parking spot there is a car or not. The information is transferred on the web, on the internet. When I want to park, I have an app and I say I would like to park and the system will inform me about what are the parking places nearby where I am. I select the one I am more interested in, probably the one where there are more free spaces and it will drive me. When I park, it will start counting the time and then when I go away, I understand I'm leaving and it will charge me for the amount of time I was there. Other applications are related with the yield and precision agriculture to monitor the quality of the soil, the humidity uh, and parameters like that to improve the, the crop growing. Okay, I provided also some uh, reference there so you can go a little bit more in detail if you are interested possible project proposals of other development of this environment or developing on new services, applications, there is still lo lots to do, we are at the very beginning, so there are lo lots of things that can be done and I really think that we are at the beginning, so the first step probably is there, but much more steps should be done, maybe also together if you are interested. Um, so, uh, thank you very much. I think I went even much uh, <laughs> over the time yet. If you have questions, I will try. I will try to answer. Thank you.